Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Kerry Schmidt of Newington. In our weekday devotions, we were studying how to make good calls, how to how to make decisions we can celebrate. And this weekend, I want to visit this simple principle that good calls always bless others. Good calls. The, the, the decisions that I'll look back on in 10 and 20 years and maybe from eternity's perspective, looking back on my life, the best decisions of my life will be those that most deeply and most abundantly blessed others. Let me ask you a question. When you make a decision, do you do so out of a thinking that says, here's what's best for me? Or do you broaden your context and do you ask yourself, what's really best for everybody involved. You see, your choices are either an, an effort or attempt to save yourself or an effort and attempt to save others. And this week, your best choices, your best decisions will bless others at the expense of yourself rather than simply blessing you at the expense of others. Today's principle is a great alternative to a self-pity party or personal discouragement or bitterness or envy, or comparison. Now, the text I want to draw your attention to is 2 Samuel chapters 8 and 9. In 2 Samuel chapter 8, the Bible is talking about King David being now established in his kingdom. And the Bible says that the Lord preserved David whithersoever he went. And David reigned over all Israel, and David executed judgment and justice unto all people. Now, The first principle I want to bring out is that Jesus has preserved you and me just like he preserved David. He establishes you. He establishes me. Now, you might not think of it this way, but whether you do or not, you you have a kingdom. I have a kingdom, and it's my domain. It's, It's my home, my family, my possessions, my income. The world that God has given me to govern and to enjoy and to rule, and it might be small compared to David's. But nonetheless, it is a gift from God. God has preserved me. Why does God preserve us? Well, the second principle is that God wants to bless me. Jesus has blessed me. You see, chapter 19 goes on to say in verse 1 that David asks, Is there anyone left from the house of Saul to whom I might show the kindness of God? That is a powerful verse for a lot of reasons, but number one, because David had been established and preserved and had been blessed by God, and his heart response to God's blessing was, who can I bless? And not just amongst my friends and amongst my uh, associates, but he was looking to the house of his enemy, Saul, and for Jonathan's sake, his friend, Saul's son. He was saying, is there anybody in Saul's house, is there any relative of my friend Jonathan that I can bless? I love David's heart. I love David's spirit of generosity. I love that David saw the blessings in his life and the power of his kingdom as a resource with which to bless others. Friend, I want to encourage you today. Look at all that God's given you and don't see it as yours. Don't see it as yours simply to bless yourself with or to enjoy or to consume Look at God's blessings as being given to you to bless others. The song says it well. We've been blessed to be a blessing. We've been loved to give his love with enough to give enough. Friend, wherever you are today, whatever you have, I promise you God's given it to you so that you might be a blessing. May I encourage you, your greatest decisions will be those that are made out of a desire to bless others. Jesus said it this way, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. And he said that after saying, be kind to your enemies, love them that hate you and despitefully use you and despise you. And so friend, today I encourage you, take what you've been given, use it to bless others and to be merciful. You've been listening to Pastor Kerry Schmidt of Newington, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.